I'd like to lead off from where uh, Neil left off uh, as a, a continuation of the story. I'll be looking at three broad areas. I'll be looking at the planning process, uh, a bit about demand variability, and also some scenarios that we'll explore that may be possible to match the supply capacity and the forecast future demand ranges. They're the three broad areas I'll talk about. First of all, the planning process. Osgrid and Transgrid for many years have jointly worked together to plan efficient outcomes for the development of our respective networks. The Joint Planning Committee looks for solutions with the least community cost uh, and less, least environmental impact and the least uh, inconvenience to the community during both the construction and operation of any new assets we construct. Our decisions are not influenced by which organisation would do the work, but once we decide on an option, then each organisation implements their part of the work. But the key point is, from a community point of view, we're looking at the most overall efficient outcome. Just looking a little bit about what drives some demand variability, a number of uh, considerations need to be made when we look about predicting what the future demand is. KPMG has actually prepared a report for us on the demographic outlook for the inner Sydney area. That's this, oh, this one here. What they state in their conclusion is, overall, the rate of population growth in the inner Sydney area is projected to remain well above the New South Wales average over the medium to long term. And we see that, that as being a driver or a base enabler of future load growth. There are also a number of major infrastructure projects underway in the inner metro area, including Barangaroo, Green Square, the Central Station to Everly Railway Renewal, in addition to other infrastructure projects uh, recently announced, announced by the government. On another matter, a report on electric vehicles has also been commissioned by us and prepared by the University of Sydney to help us better understand the influence electric vehicles may have uh, on electricity demand and supply. These reports, by the way, are available on our website for you to download and read. Uh, picking up from where Neil was discussing uh, future um, demand uh, um, predictions, first of all, we need to recognise that there's considerable uncertainty in forecasting electricity demand. This uh, median line which Neil was talking about is under continual review and is formally uh, assessed and renewed each year. However, we need strategies to be flexible to accommodate lower or higher future load growth scenarios. So this one's effectively a flat load growth and this one's slightly above the median curve. So we've developed this demand range to test the suitability and efficiency of various planning options. Uh, out into the future. This will come into play in some uh, further slides I have. I'd just like to take a slight diversion because this is relevant to my uh, uh, discussions later. Just to give people a feel for with cable installation how long it actually takes to implement these options. Normally with a, a cable installation we have a, an approval process. This is uh, statutory and environmental approvals uh, and property assessments and negotiations. We then have a, which may go for maybe three years. Then we have a design phase, which may actually start within the approvals phase, but it may be around one year. At that point, you have a package of approvals and uh, concepts and designs that you can actually put out to market the bill. That's the um, construction commitment point. And typically, it could take around three years to actually build it. Uh, so you're looking at around seven years, plus or minus a year, depending on the scale and the length of the, uh, uh, the cable route. So, the point here is you can't decide one year to build a cable and have it ready the next. That just doesn't work like that. So keep that in mind with the following slides. This is just picking up from Neil's uh, last slide where the dark blue is the uh, corridor capacity and the light blue is a simple like-for-like -like replacement of the 132,000 volt cables. And this was a 750 million and 10 year type solution. With this uh, concept, there's no planning to determine efficient outcomes. It's a simple like-for-like uh, -like replacement. So that's our starting point. <coughs> if we get a little bit 
more uh, clever. One scenario is to replace the, the 132,000 volt cables that have been retired only when they're needed to replace whatever future demand may occur uh, in the future. So if in 2019, for example, uh, the demand was around here, then we could uh, build these like-for-like -like replacements to meet that, uh, meet that demand. Remembering, of course, from the previous slide that we need to have made that decision somewhere around six to seven years previously. And that's a challenge, to actually decide that many years out that we want to do that. Decisions need to be made well in advance. Looking at another scenario, uh, to supply the capacity shortfall by a single 330,000 volt cable at a higher voltage, when Neil mentioned that uh, this single 330,000 volt cable can take six or seven times the capacity of a single uh, 132,000 volt cable. So what would happen here is in 2019, um, this would enable us to retire the 132 cables back here and put in the cable of a, a single 330,000 volt cable to bring the capacity up to here. The note that the 330,000 volt cable has a fixed capacity. We can't vary it. Has has about 700 or so megawatt capacity. Now this strategy. Uh, does work well from a capacity supply point of view, but it assumes no non-network strategies have been, been implemented. So it's a um, fairly simple augmentation uh, solution. Just to give you a bit of an example in case people haven't seen how, what the implications are of a, installing a cable in the street, there's, during the construction phase at least, there is quite some disrupt, dis, uh, sort of disruption. You have the um, trench itself, maybe two or three metres wide. The cables are installed and encased in a special um, a strengthening material, a concrete mix. And while this construction happens, of course, that portion of the road is, is uh, unavailable. Uh, the beauty, of course, is that once you cover it over, you would, would hardly know it's there. And that's a typical construction for most of these uh, cables here that uh, Neil mentioned before. The 330,000 volt cable, by the way, is very similar to this, just the diameter of this cable may be a bit bigger and they may be fractionally wider apart, but apart from that, the 330,000 volt installation would be similar. So what we could do, where I had that uh, previous graph, is to actually install a single 330,000 volt cable as shown, and that would effectively replace the capacity of the multiple 132 cables in red. So you would have uh, the 132 cables removed and the single 330,000 volt cable installed. The advantages of this include uh, many uh, fewer kilometres of construction, lower, lower associated community and environmental impact. It's also a lower cost. Neil mentioned around 750 million. The order of magnitude for this is around mid, mid 400s. So you're talking around a 40% reduction in cost for a similar capacity with less environmental and community, community impact. This also provides Transgrid with some capacity to manage um, our ageing cable network as well. Now going one step further with a, uh, a modification to this uh, cable scenario is to actually defer the installation of this higher voltage larger capacity cable by a number of years by using demand management, uh, which will be subject to, uh, Mal will talk about in more detail next. Of course, we need to make sure that DM is available and assess its availability, but it does have the advantage of deferring the large capital spend by a few years. So I'd like to leave you with the um, question in your minds of what magnitude of demand management or other non-network solutions could be available to fill this to fill this space between the available capacity and some future demand load. Of course, a few factors will affect uh, affect this discussion, including the exact cable retirement program of Transgrid, and uh, which is this, the blue graphs, uh, and also the, where the load will be in the green band. 
So our challenge is to discuss and explore possibilities to actually bring our supply capacity into the area of where future demand may lie. So it would be good if you could turn your minds to explore opportunities for non-network strategies to maintain our reliable supply of electricity and manage the risks of our industry's ageing cable network. So I hope that helps give you some background to have a good table discussion. Thank you.